Hello everyone and welcome to the GK's webinar on EVA procedures using computed tomography and angiography uh, fusion. I am Charlene Hondru, I'm the customer education uh, leader in interventional for Europe um, and I will be leading this uh, webinar. I will also share my contact details at the end in case you have um, any uh, further questions um, or needs for more demo, more presentations, uh, further info on the whole subject. Uh, have in mind that your mics are muted, so in case you want to ask a question or um, a comment, just please use the Q&A um, window. Uh, if you type your question there, I'll be the only one <coughs> that can uh, see it, uh, so I will just have to voice the question and then um, give you the answer. Uh, also, if there are any technical issues, if um, you need me to speak louder or um, anything anything that you have an issue with, just please let me know through the Q&A uh, window. So I will move on to my uh, presentation now. Um, first of all, the necessary disclaimer that I have to um, present and then um, I want to just explain the, um, this course, the agenda of it, um, and what we hope um, that you'll be able to uh, understand and grasp by the end of it. So the purpose of this uh, webinar is to provide a, a, a quick overview of how to leverage all the information that the pre-op CT can give you. Um, and leverage all this information during your procedure, during the intervention, by fusing um, the 3D model of the pre op CT with all the information, all the measurements that we have uh, acquired uh, with the live um, images during the procedure. The learning objectives of these sessions, um, we hope that by the end of it, you will be able to understand how to extract the important information uh, that the CT scan can give you and this information will be available during the intervention. Um, we want you to understand what the clinical benefits of fusing the two modalities are because aside from the fact that yes the results are beautiful, uh, the images are impressive, we want you to understand that there's an actual clinical benefit that is really important behind it and that's why uh, you would want to use it. Um, and then the third point, we would like you to be able to understand how to fuse the, the two modalities, the pre op CT and the um, X-ray image that is the live image during the procedure. Um, very quickly, uh, I will explain what EVAR SS2 is. So it's the set of tools that GE is providing. Um, to help you from beginning to the end of uh, your procedure, whether you have a simple EVAR or fenestrated EVAR, um, you have the first um, set of uh, tools that will help you during the planning phase. So you have an interface with all the tools easily accessible uh, for how to do all the measurements that are needed, how to um, to analyze your model and get all the information that is needed. Then you have the second phase and the tools provided for it uh, for the guidance uh, phase. During the procedure, you have your 3D model that has been exported onto your live screen, uh, merged with it and uh, being used as a guidance uh, in order to, to do your procedure. And then the third phase is the assessment uh, phase, and we're mainly talking about the uh, cone beam CT that is uh, performed at the end of the procedure, where you can actually see how your stand has been deployed, whether you need to do any further intervention. Um, in this webinar, um, we will not touch the third phase, the assessment, simply because um, this is a really hands-on uh, in-room procedure where you have your patient and you do your 3D acquisition. So for this webinar, we'll just talk about the planning, um, the planning phase, and then the guidance phase uh, during the procedure. 
So what are the clinical benefits of eVersys 2? As I said, that's the most important point of this uh, webinar. As I explained, once you have your 3D model prepped uh, from the pre op CT, um, you will have to do a registration um, between this model and the live image, the, the patient that is on the table. And after that, once the registration is done, then you basically can be guided from this three model. So the 3D model will be perfectly registered to your patient. So when you move your CM or when you move your table, the, the, the 3D model will uh, follow. I have here a small um, video that I can share with you just so that you get an idea of uh, what it looks like. If you are watching this on a phone, you might have to just tap on the little window that uh, pops up. Shouldn't be the case for a computer. Um, so you can see here we have the 3D model of an aorta. Uh, we have in the background the, uh, the patient, the live image, all the tools you can see there that have already been inserted. And by moving the table, the whole anatomy moves. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, the fact that the, the model is registered. Well, it means that it's from now on, it's your guidance. Um, for most of the times, you can be um, assisted by the model in order to know where to uh, move your catheter, um, where, your, um, where your vessels are, uh, where the openings of the stands are, uh, meaning that you have to do less and less x-rays and uh, less contrast, uh, contrast injected. So the, the contrast will be injected uh, in some cases where it's actually needed, but most of the times uh, you'll be able to just use the 3D model and be based on that um, in order to guide yourself in the, during the procedure. Uh, another clinical benefit that this uh, eVersys tool can give you is a digital zoom. So the digital zoom is a very important feature. Um, it's a zoom to a percentage, uh, to a huge percentage. You can zoom as much as you want during the procedure in order to get as much detail as you want. But it is not an optical zoom that increases the dose. So you can um, zoom without any fear as much as you want throughout the procedure. Um, it will not increase um, the dose. Here again, I can show you a little uh, video of what it looks like. So I have my 3D model uh, of the aorta, the outline of it. You have the background, live image, and then I am zooming and I can zoom as much as I want. Um, you can see here a lot of detail. And this result is without having any uh, effect on the on the dose. So, in the end, what we want you to um, take away from that is that um, by using by using the tools of Eversys to uh, you are helping your team uh, towards a radiation and contrast reduction. Uh, so we also have a study that was done across several um, sites in different countries like Japan, US, UK, uh, France, where the, the teams uh, that were performing uh, EVA procedures um, using the discovery, um, the discovery hybrid OR uh, from GE, and the eVersys to tools, and of course, applying all the best practice uh, techniques for uh, minimization of dose, um, were able to decrease the dose, the median DAP of the procedure by 12 times. So this is a study that shows that uh, this is not just for very experienced operators or experienced teams uh, across countries and across teams. This is something that can be done by following uh, some simple guidelines and by using the right tools um, and leveraging uh, these tools. So um, if there aren't any uh, questions, um, 
about the webinar or about what has been said until now, I'll just move on to the demo. Um, I will demo the workflow of the planning of the CT as well as the uh, the, the merging of the of the 3D model onto the live images uh, and the phase of the procedure. Um, just have in mind that I am doing this on a demo machine, so it's not it's not exactly like your workstation in case you already have one. Uh, so you might see a couple of pop-ups or windows that look a little bit different. Just uh, ignore them. This is not what you will see in your interface. I will turn my camera off now so that we can just um, focus on the uh, on the demo. And so here we see I have my workstation, I have my pre-op CT, and I select the axial uh, images. Um, and I will just uh, open my exam with the EVAR application. Just in case you don't have the EVAR application on this uh, list um, of application, this is the favorite ones, but if it's not there, uh, don't you worry, you just open it with a generic volume viewer and then from the volume viewer you can always select this specific protocol which is called EVA. You can even type it in the search box and you will get this particular one. Uh, the EVA protocol, we're using it because it just um, because of its uh, ease of use, it will just give you the right uh, layouts and tools to easily do the whole workflow. So it will open it with these four viewports and as you can see on the top left viewport you have uh, the bone anatomy that has been automatically, um, uh, that we don't have the, the, the bone anatomy, uh, automatically we just see the, the vessels. You can maximize this window and then turn, uh, turn your model around so that you can get uh, different angles of it and uh, check everything. Uh, of course, if you're not very happy with the segmentation that has been done, you can always add or remove more anatomy. Uh, so if uh, some, uh, some anatomy that was not needed is left over, you can just uh, delete it or you can add some vessels that have been chopped off, uh, but you don't want them to. Uh, I am going to the next step. Uh, as you can see, again, there's not much you need to do. Uh, things are done automatically by the software. Every vessel has been tracked and named. Um, see, here I have the center line of the vessels of the order and the, the name of the, of the vessels. Uh, this is done automatically, but in case someone uh, would like to intervene, something is not done correctly, you can always go back one step as I did now and see the list of the vessels um, and then you can modify it so or you can add one that was not uh, put in the list so for example here i turn my model around and i can see that the uh, right internal iliac has not been uh, assigned so all i have to do is just uh, put my uh, cursor over it once I have selected right internal iliac, it will turn green and then I just click on it and it will be uh, assigned. I can do the same uh, with the left uh, internal iliac. And then my tracking is complete. So. I press on next and I will continue now. I go back to the window I had before. Um, I can always uh, modify the center line if I need to. So I'll have these curved views that you see at the bottom, um, which I can turn around and then check if my center line is actually in the center, properly positioned. Uh, if not, I can always uh, modify it. So by putting my cursor on it, you see this um, the, 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 part, the part of it uh, becomes blue. And how, how big or small this part is can be controlled by this scroll bar that you see here. And then you modify it by clicking 
uh, clicking on with the mouse and if you are happy with the modification you you have done you accept and you uh, continue so now um, I have this lumen view and the standard measurements that are uh, that you see on the right so what happens is you have a, a schematic uh, of the oh, down on the right uh, and you have several points which are the standard uh, measurement points where you can see uh, little dots and whichever one of these dots are clicked uh, it means it expects you to give the measurement uh, to give the, the equivalent point on the lumen view uh, on the left so for example I have the first point which is a bit darker blue as you can see in the, in the schematic and it's the point under the lowest renal so I have to go back on my lumen view and click uh, my mouse at the equivalent point uh, on this view then for example on the neck of the aneurysm uh, and every time I click on it you can see that the diameter of the equivalent uh, the equivalent position is uh, written on the schematic then we go to the bifurcation and you see the the diameters that are uh, that appear one by one So, of course, you can go on the other side, but I'm not going to do that now just to be uh, quicker. Here, what I want to show you is that you, uh, every time you go through that workflow, a summary table is being created. So, uh, it's like a report that you have everything that you have done, all the measurements. Um, how it works, though, every standard measurement, like what you see here in this, in this uh, schematic diagram, um, is automatically uh, put in the summary table. Uh, any other measurement that you would like to have in there, then you just need to uh, right click on this measurement and say send to summary table. I will demonstrate that later. So for example right now the only thing I've done is the standard measurement so if I show you what it looks like, your summary table So you have all the basic information about your patient, uh, basic images, and then one by one um, more analysis on the on the measurements uh, and the center lines, etc. So um, I continue here. For example, I'll give you this is an example. I'll do just a straight measurement. So just measure uh, length. This. So I just wanted to show you here that you can always. Uh, delete any measurement that you want uh, and any str any other measurement than the standard measurements you can always send them by right clicking on it to the to the summary table and now you can see that um, aside from what we had before the standard measurements you also have here you can see the first image and also at the end you see the uh, length measurement So it's up to you to include whatever you need in your uh, report. Uh, next, uh, this is an important step. Uh, this is the step where the uh, software puts automatically the contours of all the visceral arteries. Um, it is done automatically. You can always modify, so drag them if you think they're not uh, properly placed exactly at the root of the artery. Uh, so here I can drag them a little bit. There and um, what is the point? Uh, what is the the most important point of it? Actually, also that you can add or delete contours yourself. Um, but this is pretty rare from what I've seen um, with the users. Uh, it's pretty much always done automatically uh, by the software. So the big advantage of that um, you have you can have in advance the best working angles when you need to cannulate or work on those vessels. So if you know that you have to work with a specific uh, vessel during your procedure and you, here you, you manipulate your 3D model in order to have this contour 
almost like a vertical line so that you know you're looking at your uh, vessel from a vertical uh, point uh, a perpendicular uh, point to it then it means that you have the best working angle for this vessel um, so that means that here you can see for example bottom uh, right you can see uh, the angulation so it gives you how much uh, air or LO or cranial caudal you have and you can then uh, save this angulation so I create here a new saved angle I can uh, give it the name for example left renal axis or uh, whatever is explanatory for me and then this will be saved um, when we export the model uh, on the live image so I will have access to this information by just selecting the left renal um, angle and just with the joystick that is uh, on the auto positioner on my uh, as a table side I can just uh, automatically send the CRM to the right angulation again that means you don't have to shoot uh, x-rays or send contrast in order to find what's your best angle to work on this vessel uh, so so this is the important step about the contours and the visceral arteries and now I click on uh, next and now just a quick overview of uh, all the models that I have uh, that have been created through this workflow so you have on the right uh, four little screens that shows you the different models uh, once I click on them they will appear on the top left uh, viewport so right now I have the, what we call the mini aorta so it's the aorta with the visceral arteries that are chopped this is um, often what the users select because uh, they don't want to have the whole vessel sticking out to pollute their image so just more tidy if you only have the aorta and just the beginning of the of the arteries that um, come out of the aorta um, you are also have a model of the calcifications you have the model of the uh, aorta the way it was with all the arteries and you have the bone anatomy of course which is going to be used for the registration of the 3D model onto your live images that's the only way you're going to use them at uh, this uh, model uh, just as a final step once you've finished your workflow I'm just showing you your uh, summary table uh, as I said you can always add much more information in it uh, just by right clicking uh, during the the measurements or any step that you do so finally I just click on the button that says vision export and that means I will send my 3D model uh, onto my live screen inside my procedure room. So I'll, I will be pressing on my pedal, looking at my live uh, floral or record, and I will have my 3D model on top of it. So if there aren't any uh, questions about this planning phase, I can always move uh, forward to the... Um, fusion phase uh, during the procedure so I have pressed on the button sent to vision and now I'm in my uh, procedure room and on my screen I have uh, I can see the monitor of my workstation and on this monitor whenever I press on the pedal I have my background my floral my live images and the 3D model that is superimposed. At the moment, as you can see, this um, 3D model, uh, which is the bone anatomy, because as you remember, I said this is what we're going to use for the registration, um, is far from being well registered. Uh, and this is normal. We can't expect the system to know where to place this 3D model. This is a, a, a model that comes from a different machine, so. Um, we have to manually register it for the first time so uh, the please just ignore this uh, box here this is just a simulator uh, because I'm not connected to an actual system and I'm not doing x-rays on a patient at the moment I have to have a simulator um, to simulate the 
the runs, the, the, the floors and the records. Um, so you can see your 3D model here. We have the workflow that says start by view. It's the by view registration uh, that will always give you the information on what to do. So you click start by view. The system tells you just press on the pedal, do a short floral uh, first. So I'm just pressing on the pedal now. I'm doing a uh, floral and then it says uh, move to another angulation and then do another fluoro. So I do that. I'm now on a, a lateral view. I do another short fluoro. And then I continue. And then it gives me uh, my, two, um, my two images, one next to the other. Um, the workflow that we recommend is to use AP as one uh, angulation for the fluoro and then the lateral 90 degrees for the second one. Um, usually this is the easiest workflow and gives uh, the best results in easier workflow for the registration. So now I have my two shots um, side by side and I can maximize each one of them and just then uh, do the registration manually. I can either use the buttons that you see here, the little arrows, to translate and rotate my model, or simply, which is what I prefer, by uh, control and left click of the mouse, I can translate my model, and control and right click of the, of the mouse, I can rotate it. Uh, I do the same with the second uh, shot. Uh, so a bit of uh, translation, a bit of rotation. And I look at them again side by side in case I have to fine tune something. And then I validate if I'm happy with what I see. Uh, just to let you know that if any of those steps that we are doing now on the workstation, any physician can do on table side. So you have your touch screen and every button is available there. So the registration can be done either by someone in the control room or by the physician. Uh, during the procedure. Uh, that depends on your uh, preferences. So you see the, the buttons here, translate, rotate, and uh, start by view. Um, so I continue here. Uh, as you can see, I will move on to a different model. Now the bone anatomy, which is there for the registration, I will not need it from now on. So I just select a different sub-volume, which is the aorta. I have several options again here of what I can see. Um, I have my full aorta or I can go back to my mini aorta which is a bit more tidy and uh, the vessels are not bothering me. I can choose the rendering. Here you have the volume rendering uh, if you prefer um, and you can play with the opacity and you have to actually in order to, to be able to see your uh, devices. Um, but I will say that most of our customers prefer the outline uh, it's easier to see whatever is moving uh, inside the order. Again, I am showing you here that every button that I used about which volume to show, what uh, rendering mode to use, and how to play with the opacity, you have it on your touchscreen uh, touch at table side. So, um, so I have my model now, and I'm uh, well into my uh, procedure. I have my planning lines here. Uh, that I can show or make them disappear. Same with the tracking lines, uh, same as the model. You can always make it disappear for any reason you don't want it at some point in your procedure. Um, you, um, you have, of course, the, the possibility to uh, zoom here with the, the button that you see on the top. And then you can always roam, of course, and unzoom. Here are the same functions that you can find on your workstation, the zoom and roam, and uh, what to show and what to hide, like the planning lines, uh, center lines, etc. And so now I'm advancing uh, my uh, devices. 
I can show you now a few runs just to see what it looks like and here is an important point because now uh, we're inserting a stiff delivery system that means for sure you have um, affected the anatomy of the aorta you have modified it and you can see it actually in the image that um, the registration is now good at, at the moment uh, this is normal we expect that to happen uh, because the aorta doesn't look the way it looked at the beginning of the procedure so what we do is a very short um, fluoro um, most customers do something like 15 cc's of half and half saline and contrast for example uh, so you see it's very little uh, just in order to, um, to, to to see exactly what your aorta looks now that it has been deformed and so you do some uh, fine tuning of the registration based on the contrast field uh, areas so a bit of translation uh, and a bit of uh, rotation so this is a step that's pretty much necessary on every procedure and now I am registered and properly registered so now you can see for example I have my stent in there I have uh, the markers of the stent that are well aligned with the contours of the of the arteries uh, then there is a shot that is done at some point and I can see that I'm well aligned with my with my model and I can show you just a few more runs just to see what it looks like during the procedure uh, here you have a completely different angulation and new view And here you can see your um, devices and catheters inside your vessels. Here you can see uh, there's some table movement so of course my model will be uh, following and then we're towards the end here where uh, everything has is in position and you can uh, get to see how well aligned everything is with the contours and the, um, the, the, the vessels that are portrayed in the 3d model um, so this this was the the overview of how the procedure would look um, using the fusion um, so you have to do your registration at the beginning based on the bone then you have to do some fine tuning uh, once there's been some deformation of the aorta uh, and after that you know that you can uh, be, be uh, you can be guided by your 3d model when it's time to um, find the best working angles, uh, where to deploy your stent up to what point, um, you always know where the um, ostia of your visceral arteries are at any point. Um, so the, the demo is um, completed now so I'll just uh, give you maybe a couple minutes in case you have uh, questions um you can type them on the q and a um, yes um about the the certificate the attendance certificate um well please send me an email address um, because I will have to check something concerning the languages etc and so I can I can respond uh, to you via email so just type your email address please in the Q&A box another question um, yes does it have to be a GECT 
uh, in order to do this whole process? No, no, of course not. It can be a, a CD scan that comes from any machine, just standard DICOM format. Um, the only um, prerequisite would say is uh, for the slices to be smaller than 2.5 millimeters. Um, yes, uh, the, so the summary report, uh, is it saved? Yes, of course it is saved. Um, it is, uh, you will find it in your patient list. Um, it's in a film-like format, so a set of images that you can uh, print, um, put in a CD or whatever, uh, whatever your workflow is. Uh, the Yes, so the uh, yes, I can confirm. Of course, the the digital zoom uh, is not only zooming the three D model. Uh, of course, it is zooming the the real time X ray that is uh, in the background. Otherwise, there would be a, a misregistration. It would have a problem. No, it's it's a zoom uh, for both uh, images. So if there aren't any more questions, um, I would like to share with you uh, this link. You should be able to just um, browse to this link here. Uh, if you go to this page of uh, G Healthcare and you scroll down, you will find our assist magazines. Um, so they're magazines with very nice and interesting clinical cases from around the world uh, from our customers. Um, and uh, especially in the last one, uh, the number six, at the end of it, you can find the REVAR study that I mentioned at the beginning, so you can find more details about it uh, if you're interested. Um, and then I think at this point, uh, I will uh, thank you all for your time and for uh, attending this webinar. Uh, you can see in your screen my uh, contact details. Um, of course, I'm not the only point of contact. You can always uh, talk to your uh, either sales representative or application specialist, whoever you, ha you are in close contact to. Uh, but if there are any further questions um, about this webinar, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. So thank you all again very much for your attendance and uh, have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.